I just keep forgetting to close my brilliant hand-operated blast gates and that's why I'm now on a quest to automate them all. And in this video I'm gonna start with the one for my new router table. And since Stepcraft sent me one of their CNC routers, I'm gonna use it to cut out all the pieces. So first drilling the holes for some alignment pins, which will make the later assembly a lot easier. And now using an end mill to drill two slightly bigger holes in preparation for milling the threads for mounting the actuator. And cutting those threads. And then milling the recess for the actuator. And finally cutting out all the pieces using an end mill with a steep helix angle. This prevents tear out but it also gives the tool a tendency to pack the chips into the track behind it, which is a bit annoying. But hey, everything is a trade-off. In order to make the slider move freely, I made it a little thinner by sanding it, which is a lot easier than adding shims to the other assembly. After varnishing the parts, I covered them in a dry lubricant so that they will slide even better and also to keep stuff like resin from sticking to them. This piece of aluminum is going to become a guard for the actuator to protect it against impacts and to keep dust from settling on it. This could be wired so that the blast gate opens when the original switch of a machine is pushed, for example by tapping the face that goes to the motor, but since I want to use this for my new router table, this box will also contain the switch for the router itself.
This first terminal block connects protective earth to the DIN rail and bridges it to the socket. This relay changes polarity for reversing the actuator and shuts it off in case of a collision. And this relay delays shutting the blast gate after switching the machine off so that the machine and the ducting will be sucked empty and no shavings will remain that could build up and cause obstructions. Then a spacer between the relay and the power supply, just for good measure. And the power supply to generate 12 volts DC for the actuator. And some more terminal blocks for connecting everything. Now starting with the AC circuit. This will power the magnetic coil of the switch, the power supply, the time relay and of course whatever is plugged into the socket. And the switch works, which is good. And using this orange wire, the output side of the switch is used to trigger the time relay. And now the DC circuit, which powers the reverse polarity relay and the actuator. And now I can set the amperage at which I want the blast gate to stop in case of a collision. And I think I can give this a little bit more oomph. And setting the delay to 5 seconds times 2. It barely fits, but the new router table will be quite a bit taller. And conveniently, the new blast gate fits right over the old one. And I now have one on the small table saw, and one on the big table saw, and one on the router table. And the only thing missing now really is a proper dust collection system. But being able to go back and forth between those machines just like that is already really cool. Now answering some frequently asked questions. Is this really necessary? Well, of course not for a one-man home shop, but uh, for a serious production company, like a real business, um, automatic blast gates are of course mandatory 
because constantly having to fumble those blast gates is just an unnecessary burden on the workers and it creates a great source of conflict and technical problems and health issues and of course additional costs when the blast gates are just left open. But you would of course have to get some proper industrial ones for that. How much does it cost? The system I just built costs around 180 euros but there is a system out there called the iWeg Pro which costs about 130 euros per blast gate. But I have no idea if this system is any good. How is the dust collector switched on? It has its own automatic switch that senses when current is drawn by a machine. But I think I will replace that with a radio control unit in the future. Mm. Doesn't the blast gate open too slowly? It takes the blast gate about 4 seconds to open and the dust collector needs about 7 seconds to get up to speed. Can the blast gate open and close while the dust collector is on? Yes. Why didn't I use pneumatics? The power system in my workshop is 230 volts AC and I really don't want to add a second one. Especially because pneumatics are very inefficient, prone to leakage and you basically have to have a compressor being ready all the time to keep them pressurized, which is just a huge pain, especially for a small one-man workshop or one woman for that matter. Why didn't I use sleeved cable locks and a proper bridge for the neutral terminal blocks? Because I didn't have any. Will that power supply not overheat in that small box? Well, there's almost no load on it, so I'm sure it will be fine. Why do I collaborate with Stepcraft? They didn't try to screw me over. And I think they have some very interesting innovations going on with their machines. Do I really need to buy a multi-thousand euro CNC router just to make one wooden blast gate and wouldn't it be much easier and cheaper to just buy one? Yes. And I forgot one. Why did I connect the neutral through the main switch? That was a mistake. There is no need to disconnect the neutral in this case because in order to make the thing safe for working on it, you would simply pull the plug. But it won't do any harm either under these circumstances. I didn't realize it at the time, but that was actually the reason I ran out of terminals for the neutral and then had to add another terminal block, which I then had to connect via that mentioned bridge. <laughs>